Welcome to Build Your Difference, a podcast designed to help visionary people like you build distinguished brands that inspire and engage a growing audience. Hi, my name is Pierre Walters. I'm a producer here at Blue Artists. Build Your Difference is a podcast that tries to focus on uh, providing inspiration, advice, topical narratives, and uh, sort of operates as a forum for me and the producing team here at Blue Artists to provide updates and, and topics of interest to our clients and the broader public. I recently came across an article called How to Come Up with a Brilliant Business Idea by Colleen DeBase. And this article, I think, is really powerful because many of us are entrepreneurs or have that desire to be an entrepreneur. And, you know, we have an idea in our head, but <laughs> it can be hard to take that idea from just a concept uh, into execution. Um, or, you know, for some of us, it's it's even hard to take that idea from just sort of a murky concept in our head, like I said, and into something that we can even clearly articulate. So I wanted to share this article with you because it's, it's, it's very powerful. Again, it's called How to Come Up with a Brilliant Business Idea by Colleen DeBase. Sure, you want to be an empire maker, but first you need an idea, a really good one. Some might say brilliant. Startup ideas can come from just about anywhere, truly. Let's look at the most common sources, a theme or problem for your daily life, an emerging trend, a gap in a specific market, a drive to help others in an inventive way, a special skill or expertise that you possess. Which is best? We've asked scores of successful entrepreneurs and noted experts this very same question, and far and away, they agree. It's that first one, the problem or pain point that you personally experience on a regular basis. That is the ideal motivation for starting a company. While you can and should pull from any of the sources on the above list for your startup idea, it's wise to draw primarily from your own need or frustration. Why? <laughs> exactly. Starting a company will require long hours and seemingly Endless focus. Both are much easier when you feel a personal connection to the purpose behind the company. The advice I have for entrepreneurs is, number one, you need to solve a real problem. I look for those problems in my own life. Mint was because I had a challenge managing my own finances using Quicken and Microsoft Money, so I built it for myself. Aaron Patzer, founder of web-based personal finance service Mint.com, which he ultimately sold to Intuit for $170 million. If you don't have that burning personal desire to see your concept come to fruition, we don't recommend pursuing your startup idea. That's because the early days of starting a company are notoriously difficult. You might find yourself questioning whether you've made the right call. That's especially true as the months or years drag on and you've decided to quit a lucrative career, invest personal savings, and sacrifice time away from family to chase your dream. Many seasoned entrepreneurs, by the way, say it takes at least three years to find your startup footing and that many newbies give up too soon. But beyond that, there's another reason why it makes sense to let your personal challenge lead the way. Chances are, others are experiencing the same problem as well, even if they're not entirely aware of it. They're called your customers. I spent all my hard-earned money on this one pair of cream pants that hung there, and I decided to cut the feet out of control top pantyhose one day, and I threw them on under my white pants and went to the party. I looked fabulous. I felt great. I had no panty lines. I looked thinner and smoother, and I remember thinking, this should exist for women, says Sarah Blakely, inventor of Spanx underwear, whose net worth is now valued at more than $1 billion. Of course, 
You might say to yourself, wait a minute, yes, this is a personal frustration of mine, and others probably experience it as well, but chances are someone else is already working on a solution. Guess what? You're exactly right. In some form or another, nearly every idea is already out there. But how you implement your idea, position your new concept, and execute can be the defining factor of success. Countless billion-dollar companies are based on ideas that were just tweaks of what was there before. Facebook, for example, is far from an original idea. Social networks had been around for nearly a decade. In companies such as Six Degrees, Friendster, and MySpace, Facebook's success didn't come from the idea itself, but instead from countless iterations around how the product could reach customers and achieve a competitive advantage. Quote, Every company needs a starting point, says Eric Paley, managing partner of Seed Stage Venture Capital Fund Founder Collective. I encourage entrepreneurs to focus more on falling in love with the problems they want to solve rather than their initial ideas. As founders dig deeply into that original hypothesis, they will learn, adapt, hit walls, adapt again, and build critical expertise that they never considered when starting out. In fact, in many cases, the original idea later seems humorous or at least incredibly naive compared with the lengths to which the startup needs to go to become successful, Paley says. Finding your niche. The best business ideas come from your strongest areas of interest, says Ryan Robinson, an entrepreneur and writer who teaches people how to create self-employed careers. When the going gets rough, and it will, you need to be motivated beyond just the lure of dollar signs. If you're only in it for the money, you'll either give up or be quickly pushed out of the market by people who genuinely care about what they're doing and the people they're helping. They'll be more motivated than you. If you're not sure what your interests are or which of them may potentially lead to a profitable business opportunity, ask yourself the following questions. The answers may help your find your way. What are your hobbies? What is the most meaningful part of your day? What are some topics you could enjoy writing a thousand word article about? What do you love doing? What is an achievement that make you feel particularly proud of yourself? Are there any specific aspects or functions that you'd love about your current job? How about any childhood dreams you still find intriguing? If you had to choose just one thing to be remembered by, what would it be? Once you've pinpointed a business idea and settled on a vision, it's time to run with it. So again, this is Pierre. This article was written by Colleen DeBase, and I, I think it's a really great article because I, I have a conversation like this so often with uh, new clients and, and legacy clients, really, about how to execute. You know, it's important to have ideas, but those ideas shouldn't stay in your head. You can turn them into either monetizing opportunities in some way or another, or new ventures for your existing business. A little bit more about Colleen. Colleen DeBase is contributing editor at Inc., podcast host at The Story Exchange, founder of The Hampton Bee, and author of Start a Successful Business, Expert Advice to Take Your Startup from Idea to Empire, and the Wall Street Journal Complete Small Business Guidebook. She is written for the New York Times, Entrepreneur, Business Week, Smart Money, and other national publications. So again, you know, if you have an idea or a concept, don't let it sit in your head. Time is running out. Chances are there are other people with the same idea. You've got to execute. And if you don't know how to execute, seek advice. Talk it through with someone that you trust, okay? And if you don't have someone in your circle that you trust that you can talk to about a concept that you want to turn into a business idea, then feel free to reach out to us here at Blue Artists. We've got a great introductory service. Uh, it's, a, it's called Business uh, Consulting, and it's for entrepreneurs at all levels. But really, we're going after uh, entrepreneurs who, uh, or people who want to be entrepreneurs, who have this concept and, and need help turning it into an idea. You can check that service out under brand support on our service page on our website. Again, my name is Pierre, and I want to thank you for listening to this episode of the Build Your Difference podcast. 
You are building an incredible brand. We're grateful to be your creative agency. Until next time, keep growing, keep striving, and keep building your difference.